The first thing we have to deal with is the installation of Alce. I will demonstrate the procedure on a Macintosh computer where Photoshop CS5 is installed, but the moves are very similar for other versions as well. In case you need detailed instructions, please refer to the PDF available from www.bigano.com. After purchasing Alce, you will receive a file like this. It's a Photoshop extension and all you need to do is double-click on it. Please do so while you are not running Photoshop. If Photoshop is running, well, your computer won't explode, your hard disks won't be formatted, but you will need to relaunch the program, a waste of precious time. The extension manager will launch and you just need to follow the instructions on the screen. Just a few clicks and you'll get there easily. Don't be worried by messages telling you that the author of the software is unknown. I know him personally, so trust me. This is all that there is to it. Alce is now installed and ready to gallop, and you may quit the extension manager. Let's now suppose you already have the original Alce installed instead, I mean version 1. The first thing that you should do is remove the old version after the installation of the new one, because that is not automatic. If you don't, you will have two versions available in the system. They are not in conflict, but some confusion may arise. One of the new features of Alce version 2 is the capability to auto-update instead. Let's check if an update is available. You just need to launch the Extension Manager, which is usually located in the Applications folder on your system disk, and see what happens. OK, we have version 1.9.3 available. Just click on Update and the new version will download and install itself. Very easy. How do you invoke Alce? Well, launch Photoshop first, ha ha ha. Well, you also need to open an image. The script is available in the Extensions menu, which is located under the Window menu right here in the right part of the menu bar. As soon as you select Alce V2, the control panel will pop up. The panel, as you may see, is extremely simple. It has just one slider which controls a parameter we call radius and which will be discussed later. The radius normally goes from 1 to 200, but if you check the Radius Extended Range option, you may access values ranging from 201 to 350. Also, you may control the values with the tiny arrows which increment or decrement the value by one at each click and by manually entering the required radius in the input field. The button with a question mark gives you access to credits. Oh my, what's this terrible buggle? Oh, okay, the Alk is making himself known, never mind. Well. This section is rather obvious, but basically, you may pick up information about version history and credits, gather access to this video and its advanced companion, and download the installation and user guides. You can also access our website and send us email for support. And well, you may close the window. The Run button launches Alce. It's that simple. And here you have the most important new feature, required many times by the Alce users of the previous version, which is batch processing. If you now click on the batch button, a new window appears. You may select a folder containing the images you need to process, define an output folder and set parameters like the radius and the format of the output files. Alce can be time-consuming on your CPU, so if you have a number of files you need to process, this is a very valuable option. At the moment, you can set one radius only, that is, all the images in the input folder will be processed with the same parameter. We also need to discuss which color spaces Alce is greed to devour. You may work on any image you can open in Photoshop, 
as long as it's uh, grayscale, RGB, CMYK or LAB, either 8 or 16 bits per channel. Alce will not work on images which are bitmap, duotone, indexed color and multi-channel. Finally, I want to show you how you can actually run Alce on an image. This is also a great chance to discuss the meaning of the only parameter you can control, that is, the radius. The picture you've already seen, the green leaves, is perfect for this. It's not much of a picture, but there is nothing wrong with it. There's a decent range of values between the lightest and darkest point, the color is believable, so we can just run Alce. Let me first open and detach the Layers panel, we'll need it to see what's happening. Notice that this image has one layer only, namely the background. Just keep this in mind at the present stage. Now, Window menu, Extensions, Alce V2. There we are. I just want to run Alce with the smallest possible radius, that is, 1. I'll just drag the slider full left and hit Run. It's going to be fast, but you'll see that a new document is opened, its background will appear, and after a while it will be closed. Go! OK, we're left with the original document, but now it has two layers, the background and a layer called Alce 2 1 on top. This is the processed layer, and 1 is, of course, a reminder of the chosen radius. Let's compare the two versions. This is the original, and this is Alce at radius 1. Again, original, Alce. You may notice that there is a lot more fine texture in the leaves, and you can see the veins a lot better in the processed version. Let's just run Alce again, this time with a radius of 10. We now have two layers in the file, so what's going to happen? The rule you have to keep in mind is simple. Alce will always take the image you actually see on the screen as input. So, if you make the top level invisible, you'll be working on the background, that is, the original image. If you make it visible, you'll be running Alce on an already processed image, something I would not recommend in general. So, let's hide the top layer and drag the slider so that the radius is 10. Please notice again the process. A new document appears, and after Alce has finished, a new layer will be created in the original document. Ready, steady, go! Here we are. We're now in the position to compare the difference between the larger radius, 10, and the previous version, 1. Let's start from the original image. Now, Alce 1. Now, Alce 10. Again, original, Alce 1, Alce 10. I think the value of 10 is a lot more interesting in this case. I would describe this version, compared to the original, as more plastic and somewhat 3D. The key point is the dramatic difference between the light and dark areas in the leaves, and you're certainly seeing more detail and snap in the processed version. But it's a different detail than the one you saw in the Alcha 1 version. Let's compare them again. Original, Alcha 1, Alcha 10. It's interesting to understand why, because this has a lot to do with the radius we're going to choose. So, let's go a bit further in this discussion.